Hello, everyone. Welcome once again. Okay, so today we will be discussing for producers equilibrium. So without any delay, let's understand what actually producers equilibrium is. In the previous topic, we have studied about consumer equilibrium. So if you have seen that video and if you remember the contents, you will find the producer equilibrium very much relatable to the consumer equilibrium. So stay tuned and keep hearing to what I say. So let's begin with the producer's equilibrium. Firstly, we need to understand what actually producer equilibrium is. Producer equilibrium refers to that price and output combination, which brings maximum profit to the producer and profit declines as more is produced. It says that a combination is achieved by complying two of the factors. The factors are labor and capital. So the two factors are employed in such a manner that the maximum output or the maximum profit can be attained, but with the minimization of the cost. So for comparing or for making the producer equilibrium, we require a few things. The first is isoquant. So let's see, let's see what isoquant is. It is also known as equal product curve. So let's see what it says. An isoquant shows the different combinations of labor and capital that gives the same output TPP, total physical product. So this is very much clear that when two of the combinations, that combination includes labor and capital, when these combinations are combined, it gives a same level of output. So this is what the isoquant defines. Or the next thing that we require in order to comply the producer equilibrium that is ISO cost. So let's see what is ISO cost. ISO cost the combination of two factors that cost the same to employ. It simply means that it defines the budget or the cost in which both the factors can be easily employed or utilized. So this is the ISO cost line. So two of the things that we are requiring in order to construct a producer equilibrium is isoquant, which is also known as equal product curve, and iso cost. So these two things are required. Now see, what are the assumptions? The assumption says only two factors or inputs of production, that two factors I already told you, labor and capital. Factors of production are divisible into small units and used in various proportion. By this, it means that the various factors of production can be varied accordingly depending upon the requirement of the production. Technical conditions of production are possible, are not possible to change at any point of time. It says that technical conditions, the technicalities that are involved, that can that is not possible to be changed. They are going to remain the same, but only the factors, they can be altered. Different factors of production are used in most efficient way. It says that the factors of production are employed or used accordingly as per the requirement or the need of the R. So this is all about isoquants, iso cost, and the assumptions. And with the help of these, we are going to figure out the consumer equilibrium. But before going on to this, we need to understand one more thing that is marginal rate of technical substitution. Basically, it is slope of an isoquant. The slope of an isoquant is the marginal rate of substitution. Output remains unchanged along an isoquant. The decline in output from decreasing labor must be identical to the increase in output from adding capital as you move along an isoquant. To make it more simpler, this is the actual technical definition, but to make it more simpler, let me explain. This marginal rate of technical substitution says that in order to increase the units of one of the two factors, the other factor has to be decreased. The units of other factors has to be decreased. For example, the number of labors are increased. So it means the capital, the ratio of capital will be decreased. So the vice versa, if capital is increased, the units of labor will be decreased. So this is what technical marginal rate of technical substitution popularly known as MRTS defines. Now let's see the formula. The formula says MRTS KL, K stands for capital, L for labor, is equals to delta L upon delta K. The change is, is denoted by delta. Then it is 
is equals to MPL upon MPK. MPL is marginal products of labor and marginal products of capital. So this is the formula that we use to define the slope of an isoquant. And what isoquant is? Isoquant is a combination of two factors. These two factors are labor and capital. When these factors are combined to give the best output or the maximum profit with the minimum of the cost. Now, coming to the actual topic, after understanding the concept of isoquant, MRTS, isocost, now we can easily understand what actually producer equilibrium is. So let's see what it says. It is attained at the point where the isocost line is tangent to the isoquant curve. It is attained at the point isocost line will be tangent to the isoquant curve. It is point where the isoquant curve just touches the isocost line. It touches as well as the line is tangent to the isoquant. It doesn't intersect the isocost line because each isoquant contains or holds a different combination of labor and capital. So that cannot intersect each other. Slope of an isoquant curve and isocost line are the same at this point. They intersect each other, they touch each, each other. So they are same at this point. MRTS, marginal rate of technical substitution, is equals to W upon R. This W upon R is the ratio cost of labor and capital. Next, let's see. The ultimate aim of any firm is to earn the maximum profit possible. The producer equilibrium is the situation of profit maximization. At equilibrium, the firm has the maximum level of output being produced and earning the maximum profit out of the same. It is the equilibrium level of output which the producer will produce at minimum cost and sell to earn maximum profit. To make it more simpler, let me define it. A producer equilibrium is a point which has the combination of labor and capital along with the available cost so that the maximum profit can be attained. This is the point at which the isocost line is tangent to isocorn. Isocorn line touches the isocorn, but it doesn't intersect isocorn because each isocorn shows a different level of combination. And as we all know that every producer produces with an objective of earning the maximum profit. So this is what the equilibrium explains. So now, all these situations or the conditions that I've explained before you, we are going to see the same in a graph. So here is a graph on which you can see two axes, X and Y. On X, you can see capital. On Y, you can see labor. So these are the two factors engaged. The line A, the line that you can see A is defining the ISO cost line means this is the line which it shows, this is the amount, this is the cost beyond which the combination cannot give better results. On this combination, on this line, only the if the labor and capital is going to fall on this line, then only it is going to give the maximum combination or the maximum profit. Otherwise, if the combination goes beyond this line or above this line, both the conditions are not feasible. And along with, we can also see three isoquants. Isoquant Q, IQ1, IQ2, and IQ3. The equilibrium will be at point E. It defines both the condition that isocost line is tangent to the isoquant and isocost line touches the isoquant. This is the point at which the output, the labor, and the capital, the combination is the best. And by using this combination, the maximum profit can be attained. If suppose the point F is taken or considered for the equilibrium, it will not give the maximum profit because it is far above the cost, which is not available with the producer. And if it chooses a point R, the point R, it's not going to give the same result or the maximum profit because it is beyond the cost line. So the point falling on the cost line, along with the isocons, along with the best combinations of labor and capital are going to give the best result or the maximum profit for which the entire process is being done. This is what producer equilibrium is. So we have seen how the isocons, the ISO cost and the MRTS all together when combined results in the producer equilibrium. This is before you. I hope 
this topic is clear to you. If you have any doubt, do let me know. Kindly hear it again. But let me tell you one more thing. The producer's equilibrium and consumer equilibrium are very much the same. They are completely same. If you make a comparison between the two, you will find the relation. But it talks about satisfaction and two different commodities. Here it talks about two different factors. But the objective in consumer equilibrium is maximum satisfaction. Here the objective is maximum out profit. So this is all for the day. I hope you have understood the concept. In case of any query and or doubt, do let me know. I'm here to help you out. So keep shining, keep studying. That's all from my side. Thank you, everyone.